tonight is there is do you believe that do you believe that say it like you believe turn to your neighbor and tell the neighbor you might have another one too some people have two neighbors tell your other neighbor and it's no joke thing tell your neighbor without a smile See, some people still smiling. You look like you're afraid of your neighbors. Tell your neighbor without a smile that there is a what? There is a God in heaven. Amen. Amen. Grace God. With head bowed. And eyes closed. Father, you alone deserve our worship. You alone deserve our praise. Tonight, I stand between thee and thy people to speak a word tonight. The enemy is busy, but we know that you are real. So tonight, God, we claim the victory under this tent, on these grounds. Holy Ghost, move one more night from man to man, woman to woman, boy and girl. Just be busy tonight, God, under this tent, around the tent. Carry my voice into somebody's bedroom, somebody's living room, and somebody's veranda tonight. Oh God, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleased in your sight, we pray. Let God's people say, Amen. Amen. There is a God in heaven. The passage tonight is Daniel chapter 2. The beginning at verse 1. I want you to read with me. The Bible reads, verse 1. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Then, then the king commanded to call who? And the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldees for to show the king his dreams so that they came and stood before the, the king. And the king said unto them, I have what? Dreamed. I dream and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king of Syria, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream and we will what? Show the interpretation. The king answered and said unto the Chaldeans, the thing is gone from me. If he will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation, therefore ye shall be what? Cut in pieces, and your houses shall be a dunghill. Verse 6. But if he show me the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall what? Receive of me what? Gifts and uh, Rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his what? Servants the dream, and we will what? Show the interpretation thereof. Verse 8 read the king answered and said, I know of certainty that he would what? In the time, because you see, the thing is gone from me. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is one decree for you. 
For ye have what? The pure lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I will and I shall know that you can show me the interpretation thereof. We stop there and we go back to verse one tonight as we look at a very important topic. There is a God in heaven. The passage begins by saying that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams. It happened in the second year of his reign. People like the dream. I don't know about you, but I I love the dream. But sometimes the dreams are evasive. Sometimes some scary and weird dreams. Sometimes you wonder where these dreams come from. But he said that dream cometh, the word of God tells us, that dream cometh as a result of multitude of business. It means therefore the things that you might be concerned about, they will come to you in dream. There are some of us who some persons will have come to the meetings tonight because they want to dream. And they say, when you go to bed early, when you go to bed what? Early, then you get good. You get good dream. And so some folks go to bed early because they have some numbers to buy tomorrow. <laughs> And they want to make sure that they catch those numbers. I remember, I, I didn't know about this thing that I was so real until one day I dreamed a dream and I, I told it to my brother. I told him the dream. And then, next day he came back and he said to me, you have any more dream? <laughs> so I said, why are you interested in my dreams, like, come on, man, tell me a dream. <laughs> then I realized that he went and bought <laughs> something of the dream. And I told him. Now, people like to dream. I, I, I looked at it. Oh, oh just that night, I, 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 was, I was dreaming. And I, I, and I dreamt that I was on a bike. <laughs> the bike was moving. But I was I was a, 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 a pillar on the on the on the bike, and the bike, the the, the 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 drive of the bike went around a corner was mark. I I I I was on a king size bed, and when I got up, I was on the floor. I got up on the floor. I did, so when, when, when I came on the back, <laughs> I was on the floor. Sometimes you, you dream some dreams that when you wake up, you shut your eye because you want to go back. You ever had that experience? Yeah. You, you go back because you want to the dream is so nice. You don't want it. To, and then there are other dreams now. When you wake up. And you found out that you are. You were dreaming. You say praise. The Lord. Some dreams can be so real. That even when you wake up. You are crying. Tears. In scripture tonight, we, we have a man whose name is Nebuchadnezzar. The word of God says he dreamed dreams. He was a dreamer. But this time when he was dreaming, while he was dreaming, you could hear him scream. Nebuchadnezzar cried out in the night. His servants rushed to his room with their 
swords, John searching to find out if some kind of attack was done and our king was injured. But Nebuchadnezzar had reached a stage in life where he thought he was powerful. There is no kingdom as great as his kingdom. And so he was dreaming how long will he reign for? How long will he sit on the throne? Things were going good, but he was still concerned. That's the thing about life. No matter how good things are going, deep down in the back of our minds, we are wondering how long will this last? Because we know the life and the world in which we live. That good things tend to come to an end. And so Nebuchadnezzar was looking at his own life. Examining his own life. And things were going so good. Things were going so well that he was concerned if this was going to last forever. He was living his life as if he was God. People worship him. People bow down before him. Nebuchadnezzar was and seems to be the king of kings. He walks around with pride. He looked at his kingdom. He looks at things that he has accomplished. And somebody says, he says, is not this great Babylon that I have built? I've set up a kingdom and it will last forever. Everybody ran and worshiped him. And that made him feel good. That made him feel powerful. But as I said before, as good and as powerful as he was, he had soldiers. He set up his, his Babylon. They said the wall was so big that two chariots could pass side by side with ease. He had servants. Money was there. He conquered even the, 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 the Israelite kingdom. He plundered nation. He, he, he destroyed all, everything that was in his path. He destroyed it and he felt good. It's like some men in some communities. They buy up every land. They build houses. They buy up police. Soldiers. Is that they have become some little gods. They, 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 they can't be arrested. They can't be charged. Anything they want, they feel that they can get it. If they want you to move from here and go there, then they'll find some way to make uh, uh, it happen. If you have a piece of land, they might turn up with some documents to say that this piece of land belongs to them. They are so powerful. No justice system, no thief, big dogs in their yard. They have security systems and cameras and they tell themselves that nobody can enter. Nebuchadnezzar was in that position where he had everything to his comfort and believe that nobody can conquer him. Nobody can come in. But one night, God gave him a dream. I love somebody. I said, one night, God says, you believe you are secure. You believe that life is going good for you. You believe you have everything. But I want to remind you that you are not God. I am God. You are not to be worshipped. I am to be worshipped. I am the only God around here. Come on. Somebody talk to me, church. I am the only God around here. So what God, God never sent an army to him. One dream. Hello? One dream God gave him. And in the dream, 
He cracked it open. In the middle of the night, no security was outside. Security was tight. Men don't sleep. They're pacing outside the king's gift with sword and with shield. Let me tell you somebody in here tonight because you have a security system. Hello? You might be driving a bulletproof car. You might have your gun on your side. You might have your links at the police station. You might have your links in the the council, you may have your links in any justice system. I'm saying to you, you're still not secure. Hello, somebody. I say you're still not secure. Somebody says, accept the law. Hey, build the city. The day that build it, they do it in vain. Accept the law. Watch the city. Then the watchman wake up but in vain. I'm talking to somebody tonight who feels that they are self-sufficient, who feel they have it all, who feel that they don't need Jesus. I stop by to tell somebody that there is a God in heaven. God is on the throne. He rules. feel that he felt that the security system could not be penetrated. But God don't need to pass security to get to you. God don't need permission to get to you. He doesn't need any invitation to get to you. He don't need no address. Oh, come on, it's my doctor. I say he doesn't need any address to get to you. He knows where and when to find you because it is in him that you move and have your being. I love somebody. I say you are not your own. I say he, he, it is he that has made you and not you yourself. We are his creature and the sheep of his past when God get ready as a when God get ready you have to move so God said Nebuchadnezzar one dream he got up in the night he was miserable he cried out the security came and they asked him what's wrong the Bible says his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Can't sleep. You know, there are a lot of people who we believe at night that they are sleeping. They can't sleep. I love the way. Sometimes the more you have is the more insecure. I love I said, the more you have, is the more insecure you are. So here, the man who should be sleeping comfortable, his spirit is troubled. There are some persons might be under the tent tonight. Your spirit is troubled. Things not going as how you expect it. To be going. Your investment is not going the way that you thought it should be going. And so your spirit is troubled. But I stop by to remind you tonight there is a God in heaven. You don't have a witness under the tent. I said, There is a God in heaven. And so the Bible says in verse 2. The word of God says that the king commanded to call the, the magicians. So when the gods came in and realized that the attack that the king had was not from his environment. It was something outside of the present realities. And so he says, call the, the magicians.
magicians. Call the as challengers. Call the sorcerers. Call the challenges. Let me tell you. These are things that gave them security. They believe they have invested in these people. Because they believe that they can give them the security that they need. There are some people who invest in stocks and services limited. Hello? And so there are some folks who invest in, in NCB, some invest in, in Scotia. And now, with the, uh, we see happening not just in Jamaica, but across the world, that many investments are not secure. No matter what we have. And so Nebuchadnezzar invested in magicians. Because he believes that there is going to be a problem. And he's going to need a magician. He invests in as challengers. Because he believes that he's going to need some astro astrological explanation. He believes in, in sorcery. So if it's, if it's, if it's this kind of uh, reading he wants, then he's going to get it if he needs a challenge. Persons with knowledge. So there are people who feel that they don't need God because they have some systems, some earthly systems that they have invested in that can keep them secure. Let me tell you, I have seen across the world, as a woman, I've seen across the world some calamities that are happening. Yeah. Men who have invested in real estate. Yes. And one moment, yeah. everything yeah. goes wrong. Yeah. People who have had many things established. And, 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 and like, the, like the, the rich fool tell themselves they have goods laid up for, for many years. Things are going right. There are some persons who invest in, in children. And I'm not saying you shouldn't invest now. Don't get the preacher wrong. Don't get the preacher wrong. Some folks invest in children and they will tell you that their dependence is on their children. And they feel secure because I have a daughter in England. I have a son in the United Kingdom. I have a brother in Canada. And every now and then, my remittances will, will come. I pick up my phone and one phone call. There are some says, I have a son who lives in West Kingston. And any problem I'm having, I can make a phone call. I have a police officer somewhere. And any challenge, I can make a call. And so they feel secure. And they have left out God out of the picture. There's no calculation, no future, no relationship with the creator. God is on the back burner. They live their life as if there is no God. Just like Nebuchadnezzar. But I'm saying tonight, watch your step. I say, watch your step. You're setting up yourself. I say, you're setting up yourself for a visit from heaven. I say, you're setting up yourself for a visit from heaven. So we need God for the magicians and the soothsayers. They came and they stood before the king or the, to show the king his dream because they normally do it at that time. But the king was a dreamer. There are some of you have some dream. There are some persons who have some, some dream. I know somebody, some people have some ridiculous dream. It's a right to dream, you know. And when I say dream, to have plans. Huh? There are some men who sit down and looking at a woman. And that's their dream. Hello? There are some folks looking at, at, at a bike and that's their dream. You have a job. And somebody, Ella, Ella, Ella Allen, 
is looking at your principal job yeah. and that's their dream. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. There are people who have some dreams that they want. They, they sit in church tonight and you call them to Jesus. They will not come because they have some, yeah. some dreams. Yeah. And if I give my heart to Jesus, then my, my, it's going to mash up. Yeah. Hello, somebody? Yeah. It's going to mash up my dream. I have plans to travel. If I accept Jesus now, it's going to mash up my travel plan. Hello? I have plans to, to do this and, and plans to do that. And if I accept the, the truth now, then my dream is going to be destroyed. But Nebuchadnezzar had dream. And one night God says, you are concerned about the future. You are concerned about the future. Let me tell you somebody, if you are concerned about the future, stick with Jesus. I love somebody. I said, stick with Jesus. Because Jesus said, I am the Alpha. Love somebody. I am the Alpha and the Omega and the beginning and the end. I'm the first. And I am the last. I am He that liveth. And I was dead, but I am. I am alive forevermore. So if you're concerned about death, talk to Jesus. If you're concerned about life, talk to Jesus. If you're concerned about the future, talk to Jesus. He has your tomorrow in his hands. So Nebuchadnezzar was concerned about tomorrow. And God gave him a dream. But then God gave him a dream in Lamak. And as soon as God gave him the dream, God took it. <laughs> Hello? God took it back. Because God wanted to show him that I am in control. So many of you have dreams. And God, because of your haughtiness and your pride and the life that you're living, God has a way of scrapping your dream. So listen what the king, listen what the man says when they go before the king. Verse 3, the man came and the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Work with me, work with me. Then spake the challenge to the king of Assyria. Oh king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream. And we will show you the interpretation. Verse 5 says, The king answered and said, This thing is gone from me. Have mercy. When I, when I preach this sermon, Pastor, I like to do a little I said, Jesus. No many theologians don't permit I said, Jesus, but sometimes I, I love it. He says, This thing. Is gone from me. Let me tell you something. There are some men who are walking around. They have some dream. But right now they are troubled. Because they think gone. <laughs> you want to go a little, a little low? They used to have five, six, seven, Come on, talk to the church. I said they used to have five, six, seven women. <laughs> talk to me, church. Talk to me. Hello? And they, and they had no thought of God. They didn't remember that God says fornication is a sin. The walk and boast that them can't be with one burner. Hello? And they run here and they run there, but they never know that there's a God in heaven. And so God take the 
king. I know the king God. I know they have to. You see, when you think God in the rush, they're in trouble. They have to. They, they, they call for magic. Some more magic. And brother, you know it. And they believe in the magician of Viagra. But when they call for the magician call Viagra, it can't help. The thing is gone. And in this passage, when when the thing is gone from some people, then mix with everybody know. Come on, somebody talk to me. I said, when this thing is gone, then bets with everybody. But sometimes the poor woman, you cook your food nice, then say, sir, come on, sir, then I hit. I will have a child, I must go, I must be up, and give you high blood pressure. But you don't worry, sister, the food quite all right. The thing. Yes. I said, this thing. It's gone. All of a sudden you can't wash. You can't cook. You can't dish. And you wonder what on earth is left for you to do to please this man. But it's not your fault, sister. I say it's not your fault. He's having some problem. The thing is gone. So I'm trying to force with you before you go to bed. Because he knows you're going to require something. And because 